ओके सो टुडे विल बी डिस्कसिंग ए वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इश्यू इन द आईसीयूज दैट इज द अफेक्ट ऑफ एक्सेसिव हेपेरिन इन द एबीजी सिरिंज नाउ हाउ एबीजी सैंपल वी हेपरनाइज द सिरिंज मींस वी विड्रॉ हेपेरिन इन द एबीजी सिरिंज वी फ्लश इट आउट सो दैट दो नो विजिबल हेपेरिन इज देयर इन द एबीजी सिरिंज इट जस्ट कोट्स द सिरिंज एंड देन वी टेक द एबीजी सैंपल बट एट टाइम्स इट हैपेंस दैट इन ए हरी और बाय मिस्टेक वन either one drop or slightly excessive heparin remains in the ebg syringe and the sample is processed now this alters the report of the ebg so it is very very important to pick up such ebgs otherwise it will give a different impressions of what is going on with the patient so what we are going to do is today will be see an ebg which in which there was an excessive heparin and then we repeated uh, the ebg and what was that result so we'll show you how to suspect that there was some problem with heparin in this sample so let's see now uh, this is an abg which was taken in the morning of a patient now you can see here oxygenation there is a um, hypoxia moderate hypo hypoxia that is fine and then uh, ventilation patient is on an iv there is a slight rising in the pco2 but not out of the range that's fine okay but you see here there is ph is acidotic 7.1 okay so what could be the cause we go to the bicarb obviously the bicarb are low and this is a metabolic acidosis plus in this the uh, pco2 should go down to compensate but it is not going it is going in the opposite direction so it is a respiratory plus metabolic mix picture that is fine till now there is no issue it can happen but what is suspicious in this abg you see with severe so much severe acidosis which is metabolic plus respiratory you see a potassium of 2.2 in metabolic acidosis you should see you expect uh, the potassium to go up routinely it can happen in other condition but excessive heparin can cause falsely low potassium with metabolic acidosis so means it can it will cause metabolic acidosis plus um, uh, hypokalemia so the first suspicion come comes from here is with so much of uh, the metabolic acidosis why potassium is low the second clue which we got here is hemoglobin is coming falsely low so it it may not be because of the heparin but it can be because of the sample maybe it got diluted or something like that so this is not fitting into the picture in in the patient which we are discussing which we were uh, in which from the sample was taken so this was uh, not up to the mark so metabolic acidosis with hypokalemia with so much low hemoglobin not directly because of the heparin but can be a dilution plus you say lactates are pretty normal so so much lactic acidosis so much hypokalemia hemoglobin going down and you are getting low lactate it can happen in dk but uh, in dk also i don't think this picture will come it is and the, it was not fit, uh, fitting into the patient's picture now we'll we repeated the sample and let's see what happened so this is the abg we repeated you say the ph got corrected obviously the hypoxia was uh, hypoxia was there and pco2 was high this patient was on an iv in bicarb so this was expected now you see bicarb the bicarb bicarbs were normal lactate more or less same and you see potassium came up to 4.5 so how much is the difference between the two blood gases so whenever you see an abg in which there is a severe metabolic acidosis but potassium is low hypokalemia is low plus other subtle signs like normal lactate and hemoglobin low here we see this hemoglobin was 8.1 in the normal sample it was 14 so you should suspect and you should repeat uh, the blood gas of such patient again repeating met severe metabolic acidosis with hypokalemia with normal lactate and hb uh, fall not correlating with the patient so these are subtle clues there are some articles in uh, on the net uh, one is of latest in june may or june july 2022 in which they experimented uh, by putting the excessive heparin in the ab series and they got some results in that uh, samples pco2 was also a bit little, little bit low i'll uh, post that link in the description so many centers now are coming up with pre filled syringes some companies are making it so we use mostly uh, those syringes 
and those pre-filled syringes it can help but routinely you just take the heparin flush it out from the syringe so that no visible heparin remains in the abg syringe that way most of the time your samples will be right so this was the today's uh, session topic see you next week